In this video, I'm going to show you the exact roadmap that I took when I was learning to code with Harvard's CS50. And I wanna do point out the obvious, choosing the correct path for doing CS50 might mean the difference between finishing successfully all the materials and learning how to code versus getting frustrated and giving up. Okay, so if you're just if you just found out about CS50, you probably already know that it's a very good course. In my opinion, it's the best course. If you take all these CS50 programs and you're able to complete all your projects, not only will you have learned how to code in a correct way without losing time in tutorial hell, um, using you know fairly um, up to date technologies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not only will you have learned a lot, but you you will also come out of here with a fairly robust portfolio. So you will be able to put a lot of your assignments, which are really projects, you will be able to put that on your personal page. Um, you can link to it on your resume. So you could really use that to apply for jobs in the future. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you, know, you go to edx.org or you just go on Google, type in CS50 EDX, and it will take you um, to this page here, Computer Science Courses and Programs from Harvard, and they have a lot of options. When I took the course, they pretty much only had their main course plus three follow-up courses. So that was web development, AI, and game development. Nowadays, they have another course that's only on Python, which I highly recommend you start with. What I did when I took the course, is I took the main course by week seven, I believe. They teach Python. I was totally lost after the lecture. I could not complete the assignments. So I went on a tangent and I basically ended up taking the whole Python course before coming back to the main course and finishing it. That took me about a month, which was okay because I wasn't really my goal wasn't to finish as quickly as possible. My goal was to learn and my goal was to only code two hours per day. And as long as I was coding two hours per day and learning and, and, and actually finishing the assignments and, and you know working on my projects, I knew that it was just a matter of time before I finished all my courses. And so the way I recommend that you take these courses is first you wanna take the Python course. Why? Because the Python course, in my opinion, is a lot slower paced. It's a lot, it's much more beginner friendly. The pace of the main course is the same pace as the students at Harvard. It's very intense. And if you've never learned how to code, and if you have a thousand things going on in your life, and you don't necessarily have all the time in the world to learn how to code, you might get thrown off, you might get frustrated, you might end up quitting if you start with the main course and it's too hard for you. So instead, you should go ahead and start with baby steps. Start with the Python course. The first few lectures, the first few weeks actually, they're fairly easy. And by fairly easy, I mean, I obviously, as I said, I took that course after already having taken six weeks of their main course. I already knew how to code. But I would the entire time that I was taking that course, I was noticing what a good, option this course is for beginners so again if you're looking at cs50 go ahead and start with cs50 introductions to programming with python so that is this course over here now you do want to enroll on edx you enroll you follow the on-screen instructions you make an account i think they might also ask you to create a GitHub account. GitHub, in a nutshell, is like the virtual environment in which you code up all your assignments. And they also use it to grade your assignments. It's all one platform where you can store your code, update your code, submit it, etc. I'm not gonna get into all the details. They, are, they do a very good job at explaining exactly all the steps in order to create your EDX account, in order to create your GitHub account. Do not pay for anything. I will explain how you can get a certificate from Harvard for free. 
So once you all signed up with everything, they will redirect you to the actual course page, which has basically nothing to do with EDX. EDX is only used for keeping track of your grades. And so once you're all signed up, it will redirect you to this page, which is the courses page. Over here, you have all your lectures on the left. Right here, you watch your lecture, pro tip. You can watch the lecture twice. Don't feel frustrated because you have to watch the lecture three times. If you don't understand something, just watch the lecture again. And you watch the lecture here, and then afterwards, you have your problem set, which over here gives you exactly the instructions that you need in order to submit your assignment and what the assignments are, etc. And so you don't really deal with EDX at all. Um, maybe at the maybe um, at the end to submit your final project, I think it goes through EDX or you submit it through EDX and then they give you your final grade. But again, you don't have to pay for anything. And over here on the left, you'll see that it says CS50 certificate. So this is a certificate that is uh, produced by Harvard, it has nothing to do with EDX. And once you confirm that you finish your, your course, um, they will you will follow the instructions here and you can get a certificate with your name on it uh, from Harvard University without having to pay for it 100% for free. And so this is the reason why I say that it's not worth getting the separate EDX certificate. You're basically paying or you're going to pay for the same thing that you're already getting for free. So once you finish programming with Python, let's go back over here. Uh, you should definitely do the main course and the main course is CS50X Over here again, you're gonna enroll in the course you follow the on-screen instructions and then I'll redirect you eventually to the main courses page Which looks like this you'll see it's slightly longer 10 weeks Again, you're just gonna follow all the instructions that are on here and eventually, once you finish all your assignments, you'll be able to get your certificate. Um, I, oh, also, you have your grade book, which if you click on it, you'll be able to see your grades. For example, if I click on mine here, you'll see that I've completed all the assignments. And once they have, once I completed all the assignments, this green notification here showed up telling me um, how to get my CS50 certificate, click here, whatnot, and follow the instructions, get your free certificate. Once you finish the main course, at this point you pretty much have a fairly robust knowledge of your, the final project for the main course is to build your full stack application using Flask and Jinja which if you wanted to, you could totally write your own app that you can then sell to other people with that. Now, that's probably not a good idea still because obviously Flask is an okay framework, but it's fairly simple. If you wanted to use a, a more robust framework for more complicated apps, if you wanted to make your database a lot easier to work with, um, and maybe even abstract SQL out of the whole equation, maybe just write everything, including your backend code and your database code all in Python, then you're, you need to take the next course. And so the next course that you need to take now is CS50's web programming with Python and JavaScript. And over here, in this course, you're gonna go deeper into Python, how to use classes, how to abstract SQL and work directly with models using uh, Django. You're gonna learn about React and JavaScript. Whereas the main course is fairly wide and it's teaching a lot of different areas in computer science, the web programming course goes deeper into programming from the web, specifically using Python. And so again, once you sign up for this course, it'll take you to their dedicated page. You can go ahead and, and you know the drill after you finish all your assignments, you'll get a certificate from this. And at this point, you probably have a very nice portfolio. And I would totally recommend at this point, you make yourself a CV, you make yourself 
a portfolio website and you start applying for jobs, I have a separate video on this channel, I'll link it below, describing how I marketed my services after finishing CS50 and how I managed to land a job. So again, at this point, you're fairly proficient at programming for the web and you should be able to get a junior developer job, preferably at a local company, you know, cause there's probably like a smaller amount of applicants. I'm sure you can, it'll be easier for you to like, you know, sell yourself as someone who can get the job done, who can learn on the job. And so you can either stop here and just go out in the world, either work on your own project or get a job as a junior, which if you do that, that's totally fine. But I would recommend you do two more courses. One of them is the artificial intelligence course. So again, I'm not going to go through it, but it's the same procedure. You sign up, you follow the instructions there, you complete the course. And what you're going to get out of that course really is you're going to be a lot more proficient on object oriented programming and to a certain level, also algorithms, which will just add to your general knowledge will make you more proficient in Python. And again, I've heard something like you need 10,000 lines of code in order to really become good at coding. And that's just adding to it on top of all these courses. I do recommend, and I remember hearing from David Malin a while ago that he recommends Students should take a, a dedicated algorithms course. And the course that he pointed to is Princeton's algorithms course. And so here's the course. It's via Coursera, which means that it's a premium course. You do have to pay for a membership. I think it's like, it's not that much, maybe like $50 a month. Maybe it could be less. I don't remember right now. Again, this, this course will strengthen your data structures, your algorithms, and they teach it in Java, which is a language that is not taught at CS50. I'm in the process of enrolling for this course. I still haven't taken it. It's definitely on my to-do list. And again, just because I have a job now doesn't mean that I stop learning. You always want to continue learning. And I recommend that if you're already working on a project that's profitable, or if you already have a job, you know, you can still put in two hours a day of coding when you have free time. It's possible. And an algorithms course in Java will just, it will just add to your skill set. doesn't mean that you have to become a Java developer eventually, but I think that adding an additional language has a lot of benefits um, and algorithms, data structures, even if you're not going to use that all the time, it's still good to have at least the fundamentals of how to write efficient code and how to solve computing problems efficiently. So that's it for, for this video. I hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to write them below. I wanted to emphasize the obvious, and that is that once you start the learning path, do not deviate from it. Do not start one course and then go to a different course and then try to come back a, a while later. That's just complicating everything for you. If you don't understand something, what you need to do is continue to find the solution until you find it. You do not, just because you feel frustrated, now you're, you do not go now and start a new course. 